Welcome to Wounded for War, featuring the Bible teaching of Phil Santo. This broadcast is an online video teaching through the Bible to help people rethink Jesus and his mission, to seek out the hurt, the lost, and the broken. So grab your favorite drink and a seat and join us as we start today's talk. Well, welcome back, guys. Today, we're going to jump right in uh, where we left off last week. <clears throat> but before I do, I want to give a summary of, uh, of last week. It's really good to have some context for this week. So uh, remember last week, uh, Paul said that he had come preaching in weakness, not with eloquence of words or wisdom of man, but, but uh, that he came preaching in weakness. Paul will later explain in uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, that God's power is perfected in weakness. Remember Paul said it in uh, verse 2, that he determined to know nothing except Christ and him crucified. Paul starts back up, though, with a contrasting thought in verse 6. He's, he's not saying that he came with wisdom of man. He's, he's saying, I didn't come with eloquence of words or the way that man has wisdom. Earlier in, in verse 2. Now he's going to say in verse 6, we do, however, speak a wisdom among the mature. Among the mature. What does he mean by that? Uh, in behavior or made whole is what that word uh, actually um, is best uh, described as is that in your life, in my life, as we mature in Christ, in our relationship, that somehow uh, our our knowledge informs our actions, that we literally um, live out what we believe. You know, you could believe that working out is good for you and never to lift a weight. You can believe that uh, vegetables are good for you but only eat burgers. Knowledge doesn't always lead to wisdom, right? And what he's saying is that as you mature, what that's going to be from is that you've put into practice what you believe, that your behavior is making you whole. But who's doing it? It's God, right? So we, however, speak a wisdom among the mature, but not a wisdom, he says, um, not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. So he's saying, there's a wisdom that brings you to maturity, and then there's a wisdom that comes to nothing. On verse 7, he says, on the contrary, we speak God's hidden wisdom. I want to talk about that for a minute. Hidden wisdom. We speak. It means to, to talk casually about God's plan. So if you're talking openly and casually about God's plan, then how is it uh, God's hidden wisdom? And then he goes on to say, in a mystery. Well, I want to share with you a story that uh, once I uh, experienced in California. I was talking with my dad out in front of a, a local drugstore, and we were talking about God, and, and specifically in relation to his, his uh, preaching to my grandmother. He was constantly trying to get my grandmother to become a believer in Christ. Now, she was uh, religious, and yet um, she trusted in all of her own acts to get her into heaven. And so my dad was trying to explain that that won't work, that Jesus Christ was enough. The problem was is that he didn't use love. He used scriptures to kind of, you know, pound on him. Now, I've been guilty of that too in my past, um, but this story just comes to mind. Here's why is because when we were sitting out in front of that store and God had laid on my heart some things to share with him, we were speaking, we were talking, and, and I was sharing about the grace of God and his kindness that leads us to repentance and, and his love through his grace and how that transforms our life. You see, he was acting a bit like Paul in that moment of Acts chapter 9 where he's kind of like, he's, he's confounding, he, he has the knowledge, he's trying to get it through to them, right? But I remember this guy standing off from a distance in a wheelchair and he rolled up after we were done talking 
And he said, hey, you guys were speaking in tongues, weren't you? I said, no, 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 I was just talking English, man. We were just sharing things about God. And he came up and he says, no, 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 no. I, I sat there and watched you guys for a long time. As you were sharing the things about God, we were hearing it in a totally different language. So God was hiding the things his wisdom teaches from the rest of the people around me. Now, he, he knew what was going on. He was a Christian. And he was spiritually discerning it. I had no clue what was happening. And I've never had that happen uh, to my knowledge uh, ever again. But it brings to mind those things where it says we speak God's hidden wis- wisdom in a mystery. A wisdom God predestines itself, it says, before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age knew this wisdom because if they had known it, they would not have killed and crucified the Lord of glory. You see, worldly wisdom is what they had. And contrary to our, our, our spiritually hidden <laughs> and God-hidden wisdom, they have their own wisdom and, and the world's wisdom um, that really boils down to one thing, and that's life comes through strength. That you go pursue everything you can and get all that you can, right? And, and, and don't take any prisoners. And uh, as Cobra Kai says, no mercy, right? <laughs> so life comes through strength. That's the world's wisdom. It's how you can boil it down. And then if you just take it juxtaposed to God's wisdom, it's very different. God says things like, uh, if you die to yourself, you will live. Not go get your best life now, but if you put your life to death, your desires, your pursuits, your plans, and you, and you say, Lord, I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to give you my whole life and for you to do what you want with it and then to let the Spirit lead you. He says that brings life opposed to the world's way, right? In verse 9, Paul goes on and he says uh, that, but as it is written, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no human heart has conceived, God has prepared these things for those who love him. So now we know who it's for this wisdom of God. It's for those who love Him. And I, I want to later on invite you to uh, begin pursuing that love, to enjoy who He is and let Him uh, breathe life into you by His compassion, His love. <clears throat> but you, that's the starting point. It's for those who love Him, this wisdom. Now, remember, in, in verse uh, 6 through 9, what we have is he's kind of ex- expounding on what spiritual wisdom is. And now he's diving into how we get it. How do, how do we get spiritual wisdom? Well, we start with a love for God. Isn't that the beginning of the commandments? Thou shalt not have any other God before uh, him, right? To love your God with all your heart. That's, that's the very beginning. He goes on in verse 10 to give us a lot more clarity on how we receive the spiritual wisdom. He says, now God has revealed these things to us by what? By the Spirit. So we get spiritual wisdom by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a, a, a thing. It's a person. The third part of the Trinity. He is the very presence of God dwelling within man. You see, God's presence dwelt in the temple until the temple uh, became a place where um, when Jesus ended up dying on the cross, it says that the, the veil that held God's presence back was 
ripped and torn from the top down. And in that moment, the Spirit went out throughout the world doing what? Seeking to, to draw people unto God. It says, woo them and draw them in. But then once people convert to Him, then you become the temple and the Holy Spirit dwells within you. That's why Jesus, when He went away uh, on the cross from His disciples, He said, hey, it's better that I go away because I'm going to send another. That means the same or alike, like the power that God had while He was here through the personal work of Jesus Christ. He's going to send that, and that's going to dwell in you, in me. Since the Spirit teaches everything, he says, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of uh, that person within him? So, the Spirit searches the things of God, knows all those deep things, and then he explains something. For who can know the spirit of someone except that, own, that person? The Holy Spirit and the Father and Jesus are all one. So, he knows everything. He is completely aware of everything. And he dwells within you as you become a believer in Christ. So now, the key is for growth, for new life, it's connectedness. It's remaining connected to him because he knows the deep things of God since he is his spirit, he is his mind. And in, in a sense, <clears throat> what's beautiful about that is it says that for who knows that person's thought except for the one that's in him? Well, in the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. So the spirit knows everything he needs to know, comes in you and then connects to you and now makes it to where you God and Him all have that same access to knowledge, same wisdom. You have that through Him. But as I said, the key is connectedness, right? Let's take a, a deeper dive into that thought, what that looks like. In verse 12 it says, Now we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who comes from God, so that we may understand what has been freely given to us by God. Notice that the reason He gave you the Spirit is to help you to understand what you've received by God. What have you received by God? Righteousness? A new life? Well, I need a road map. I need an understanding. I need to deep dive deep into those things because the world's going to go contrary to that and try and rob you of that thought and, and beat you down. So you have to what is called Preach the gospel to yourself daily. You have to remind yourself of what God has done in you and is doing in you. <clears throat> it says, we also speak these things not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. Now, um, the, the translators put in things and people. I like it the original way with the original words because it just says explaining spiritual to spiritual. You are spiritual now because you have a spirit within you and God is spiritual. The Holy Spirit is connected to him. Now he's connecting us together. You know, John, uh, the book of John, uh, chapter 14, verse 26, it says, the Holy Spirit who the Father send in my name, He will teach you all things. So He's going to, as He's dwelling within me, He's going to give me this new wisdom taught by the Spirit. He's going to explain all things to me in due time. Then in Galatians 5, 16, it says, Walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. What does that uh, mean? Well, um, that goes back to how you become mature, right? That, that your behavior, your actions are informed by your beliefs. Your beliefs are, are lived out. And that's what he's saying is that the, the, the Spirit's going to teach you how to do that. What's the key to it? Staying connected. So how do we do that? I like to think of it. There was a pastor that used to teach uh, this analogy, and I loved it. He says, uh, picture the, the, the Holy Spirit as a faucet, right? And in this faucet is the Holy Spirit's ability to give you uh, wisdom and power, okay? And, and what's funny is, is that as long as I remain under the faucet, I'll receive as He pours out. 
I don't get to determine when he pours out. He just does what he does, okay? He's leading. So my job is to stay there. Now, I, there's been times in my life where I've leaned away out of fear, out of uh, people making fun of me or, or, you know, just pressure of life or whatever. And, and the Lord would say, hey, despite what you see, trust me and I'll grow you. I'll mature you. I'll give you what you need. And as I've stayed under in hard seasons, I've flourished. God has poured out wisdom and power to endure. So that's my job. But, but what, is the, what does that maturity lead to? Why should I be motivated to stay under in hard circumstances? Well, in Galatians 5, through 25, it says what the fruit of following the Spirit will be. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, uh, self-control. Against such there is no law. Religion can't even touch you, but you'll grow. You'll gain all those things. Love for people. Joy in life, even in hard circumstances. Self-control. In a season where people are turning to alcohol and drugs and, and all sorts of things to get by. He'll give you self-control. He'll give you a kind heart and some patience with people you never thought you could. He'll give you a, a, a goodness in life and a faithfulness. Now those, it says, who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. I want to share with you a bit of how that's played out in my own life. It's interesting, I, I look back and yeah, there's big moments where the Holy Spirit, I just cried out to God and He did some massive things like, you know, taking me away from $3,600 worth of drugs a month when I was younger, about 29, almost 30 years old. Um, I was a sponsored skateboarder. I was uh, making six figures, traveling all over uh, the West Coast region um, and, and I do working for another company. and. I had kind of the best of both worlds. I was making great money and doing what I loved. Um, and then when God reached down and reminded me of His love and His plan for me, in that moment, I cried out to Him and He took away the desire for drugs. You see, I still had past hurts that I was dealing with. I might have had everything the world said, but it was coming to nothing. It didn't mean squat. And so <clears throat> God enters in. And he changes my life in a moment. Now, that's one moment where he could do something miraculous. But then there's other times where just over the course of life and, and letting him live his life through me, I have learned to be more patient. My wife, the one who is in closest pro proximity to me, <clears throat> has seen that. She's seen me grown in love. She's seen me grown in patience. She's seen me grown in self-control. You see, the people around you will notice a difference in you. They'll see that fruit. They'll be attracted to it. That's probably uh, a better form of evangelism than anything else. A changed life. You see, in the early church, that's why people were attracted to Christ. is because they saw uh, Christians, little Christs, walking around everywhere. And these people were changed. In early revivals, there were times where people, it's pretty crazy, the coal miners used to have... Um, just horrible, horrible language, as you can imagine. And they used to yell and scream at the donkeys. And, and, uh, and it's been said in these stories that um, as these great revivals were going on, these coal miners were going back in and they weren't, they weren't cussing out uh, the donkeys and yelling at them. So the donkeys literally didn't even know what to do. <laughs> How funny is that? Maybe as you express a newness in your life and let God live through you and you're not speaking the same way or acting the same way. Maybe your friends are going to be like, man, I don't even know what's going on with them. But usually it becomes attractive. You see, the Bible says that we walk by, not by sight, but by faith. And a lot of people look at that and they say, well, that's a blind faith. That's a blind faith. You don't know where you're going. But that's not true. You see, we, we, we walk by, by faith with a personal evidence of the Spirit within us. I see the growth in me. I see the difference, the change, God's uh, 
Holy Spirit power in my life, not only changing me, but also doing things on my behalf and changing my, my, my circumstances in life to align more with His plan for my life. Have you ever wanted that? A new life? A change of course of direction? But you're not sure that, well, if I just go that way, maybe this will happen. Or, well, if I go that way, maybe this will happen. You know, the thing is, is that we oftentimes get stuck in life on our patterns because of fear. If it works, why, bro- why fix it, right? If it's not broke, don't fix it. But the reality is we all want a better life. We all want more out of life. God has a special plan for every person's life if we'll just let Him live through us, if we just stay under the faucet, so to speak. Now, Paul goes on and he says, but the person without the Spirit, he's going to now contrast a, 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 yeah, this is how you get the Spirit, but if you don't want the Spirit, here's what the worldly man looks like. Here's what their wisdom is going to look like and, and lead to. He says, but the person without the Spirit does not receive what comes from God's Spirit because it is foolishness to him. He is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. You see, the world's way, they walk by sight with hope in their efforts. And if they fail, if those efforts fail, like I said, they just, well, we'll just pivot. We'll just go this direction instead, right? But how's that worked out so far? I mean, think about it. The leaders of our day, the experts, so to speak, right? How is them walking without the Spirit of God and wisdom working out? They're literally, their actions are informed by their beliefs, their wisdom, which God says it'll lead to nothing. But... um, I think it's pretty clear. I don't need to convince you that the world of this wis- uh, the wisdom of this world is not wise. Watch the news for five minutes. It becomes more divisive, more divisive, more divisive, more hatred, more, uh, more of a mess. It's exactly fulfilling God's word. Uh, it says, the, or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. They're making a mess. Kingdoms fall all the time. You know, but it says in verse 15, but the person without the spirit does not receive these things because it's foolish to him. It's foolishness. To trust in God is foolishness. To let God lead is foolishness. Yet where they get off thinking that their way is better, it's baffling. It's mind boggling. But that's the arrogance of man, the blindness of the heart. But the spiritual person in verse 15, it says, however, can evaluate everything. And yet he himself cannot evaluate, be evaluated by anyone. Why? Because they don't know that I can evaluate things because I'm spiritual. I have, there's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is discernment. I can literally discern a circumstance or a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. Those things are gifts of the Holy Spirit, which um, empower you uh, to do the work of the ministry. What's interesting is, you know, I have a wisdom then that I can figure out what's really going on behind the scenes. And with them, they can't evaluate us for anything. Why? Because they don't know what's going on in our heart and our mind. But we have the mind of Christ, it says. Who has known the Lord's mind that he may instruct him? Well, nobody, but we have the mind of Christ. You see, because we have a connectedness and we stay connected by the Holy Spirit in our walk and we, we obey Him and, and listen to Him and follow Him where He's going, people can't quite understand that. They don't understand it and they can't evaluate it. They go, it's insane. It's foolishness. But we have the mind of Christ. What does that mean to have the mind of Christ for you and I? It means that I can... Think as he thinks, see as he sees. He literally is sharing his heart, his vision, and his empowerment for his life through me. It's a better life. It's a different life than 
than uh, the way of this world, and everything will kick against it. There's no doubt about it. But he goes uh, in the Bible, in, in John, chapter 15, verse 4, it says this, Remain in me, and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself, unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. So we got to stay connected. We've got to remain as a branch connected to the source of life so that we can bear that fruit in its season. But remember, it all starts by loving God, right? For those who love God. So what I want to do today I want to end today's message by inviting you into that relationship. Giving you an opportunity to love God and not only love God, but to also uh, to, to respond to Him and to stay under that faucet, to test Him out. And so I want to pray. And if that's you, you want a new life, you want to be empowered by God, you want to live the new course of, of life that He has for you to see what um, mess you've made or this world's made, how it can be transformed and you can bear fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If those are attracted attractive to you. I'd like to pray for you now and just ask that the Lord would work in you and make this your heart's cry to him as well. Father, I come before you through the Holy Spirit, through the work and person of Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Lord, I, I praise you and I thank you for your love for me and for my friends out there watching this video. Lord, I pray that you would uh, impact their life in a very unique way, that Lord, you would right now send your Holy Spirit out to them to empower them to walk in a new way. Those that want to receive you, Lord, that you would meet them right where they're at, that you would give them your spirit to dwell within them, that they would start to see a newness of life in them a new tug towards directions they didn't maybe know, uh, that were even options, or, or maybe uh, a change of character or nature, or that you would start to do some things in their life and show them evidence of you. I praise you for all the things that you've done in my life. What a wretched man I was. Not that I have, have obtained anything perfect, Lord, but I am not the same man I once was, but I'm not yet the man I want to be. Thank you that you continue to pursue me in that same way. Thank you that you change me radically. I pray that for my brothers and sisters out there, Lord, that you would do a mighty work in a way that only you can reveal in their life. I praise you. I thank you. In Jesus' name. And by your authority, Lord, amen. Join us back next week, guys. We're going to be taking up right in the beginning of chapter 3. So read ahead. Till next week. Love you.